I used to think that water washable resin like this Elegoo or Isan resin would be the way to go for easy cleanup of my resin prints. And not just these resins in particular, but any water washable resin. In this video, I'll quickly show you why I switched to using IPA and a wash and cure station like this one, and why it was the best decision ever. And as you might have picked up, I've been a tech teacher for years, and so I wondered if I'd use an IPA washing solution in a classroom situation. Well, the short answer is yes, so stick around to find out why. It's easier than you might think. I understand that IPA costs money and that the wash and cure station isn't all that cheap either, but the work and the mess it saves is incredible. I'll use this print here as an example, and in case you're wondering what this is and what it does, it's a dust port which I designed to fit into this Festool track saw. After printing, I used to take the build plate and the prints outside in this container. And that's the first problem. To demonstrate, I'll quickly show you this short reconstruction. This was not an actual print job, but it gives you an idea of the mucking around involved. I'd always have to hide the objects from the sun because you don't want the sun curing the prints before you can wash them. And I didn't want to do all this in the house. And you can see here, I'd try to bodge a solution by covering the container with a towel, which is just dodgy. But then I'd end up with a container full of water, contaminated with resin. Now you can let the sun cure the washed resin and then filter it out with some newspaper or something similar and then throw it out with the garbage. But that just became really tiresome and wasn't very efficient. At least my greyhound likes the sun. And look, the container ends up filthy. Using a wash and cure station and IPA changes everything. I'm using an Anycubic Photon Mono X and the Wash and Cure Plus, but the same would apply for any brand. In this example, I've finished a run of three on this print. It's a simple matter of scraping off any excess, removing the build plate, and then placing it into the wash container. No drips, no hassles, it's very easy. The wash container has a sealed lid, which contains the odors and stops the IPA from evaporating. And whilst all that's going on, I always make sure that I place the cover over the printer to protect what's still in the vat. Taking the lid off briefly, you can see another benefit. I use just enough IPA to cover the build plate, which means it gets a good wash too in the process. And I'll come back to that. When the cycle is done, let the IPA drain off the prints back into the container. Sometimes I might leave it resting on the top for a few minutes to drain off as much as possible. The parts come out beautifully washed. The IPA does a fantastic job, and I find I don't need to do any other brushing of the prints, unless they're super detailed. Another problem I had with water washable resin was getting the prints to dry properly before curing. This often led to a white residue on the prints, which was very annoying. Now, let's be fair, that's probably not the resin's fault. I'm just impatient, and I wanted to cure the parts as quickly as possible. And what I found after a lot of experimentation and Googling is that the white residue is created from curing prints that still have traces of water or moisture on them. And that's where the IPA has another advantage. It evaporates and dries in minutes. Since using IPA, I've never seen white residue again on prints. And yes, I've also used IPA on water washable resin with success. As mentioned, the build plate also gets a good wash, a quick wipe down with a tissue, and it cleans up beautifully. And I highly recommend the Magnetic Build Plate, a total game changer. I wouldn't print without one. You can find them easily on Amazon, and there's a link in the description below for this one. So how long does the IPA last before you need to replace it? Well, that depends on how much you print, but I found this to be very economical. Five litres costs me around $35 Australian, and you can get 20 litres for about $120. But what about responsible disposal? Well, I'm glad you asked. I keep the old IPA containers and fill them up with the used IPA like this one, and then I take them to my local chemical cleanup, which happens a few times a year, right near where I live. And it's free. It's a much better way to dispose of the waste. I did mention that I would use this in a classroom situation, and that means following all the safety precautions as shown on all the relevant products and ensuring responsible disposal. Of course, that goes without saying. It's just such a clean method for washing resin prints, it's really worth considering. I hope you've found this video helpful, and if you've had a similar experience making the transition from water washing to using IPA, then I'd love to hear about that in the comments. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great rest of your day. I'm Colin, and I'll see you in the next one.